Hello there, concertina making enthusiasts. I have been promising to make you this video for quite some time, and so I really wanted to finally get to it. I have my um, supplies set up here. The first thing that I use is this Canson XL mixed media paper. It's 98 pounds. And it comes, I think it comes in two sizes. I have found this size, which is 36 inches by 10 yards to be um, really great for me. Uh, I also have a meter stick, of course, a pencil. Uh, I have this knife just to open this package up. And so I'm gonna do that now, see if I can do that without cutting myself or ruining the paper. It's packaged rather well. Um, I think I have found this on Amazon and Dick Blick. So, um, you know, it's a fairly new product. Sorry, this crack plug is probably going to drive you crazy, so I'll stop. It's a fairly new product, but um, it is becoming more and more available. So, um, check it out. And it is fantastic paper. It's lightweight, so it folds easily. And it really takes a lot without bleeding through, so I like it a lot. Um, I'm going to just tear this open now. I'll edit this out, I suppose. Okay, so in the past, um, I also have here two yoga blocks. Um, I have done this. This table is new. I just made this. Um, I did this before on my dining room table, which is fairly small. It was wide enough to hold the, the um, roll of paper, and that's about it. And it was only about five feet long, so I really had some issues with rolling it out. And I think I'm probably going to hear too, because this isn't 10 yards long. So I like these yoga blocks to use as stops at the end of the table so that the roll doesn't fly off the end of the table and make a big bang. Um, yeah, so whatever you have. Downstairs when I was doing this, I put chairs at the each end of the table so that I could roll the paper out and put the end of the roll on a chair so that it wasn't all the way down on the floor. Because if it falls off the edge, I think you're going to risk tears or creasing and things like that. And while that is not that big of a deal, it's something to consider. I have also found this tool to be incredibly helpful. It is an EK tool, EK tools. Um, it's a scoring board, so it's got a little plastic scoring thing. And it's got this board that is 12 inches by 12 inches with scores in it. So I run the paper across it and score the um, creases. You may um, want to try this without. In my experience, when I try and do this without something that does scoring well, like I tried measuring and scoring over a marker and my folds go all over the place and the uh, concertina looks kind of a mess. But if that's okay with you, that's fine. And even with this, there are issues. So I'm gonna set that aside for right now. Um, this is one that I made in this process. I tear these pages. I don't get all precious about the edges and everything. I tear them and you can see it's still not folded perfectly. And I don't really care. I could, you know, you can kind of push and refold. And I do that a bit when I'm actually folding it. But at some point, I will probably, I went ahead and painted on the ends on this and I, I try to remember not to do that, but I get going when I get going. Um, I will probably take um, chipboard and make covers that just glue, two squares that just glue on one onto this side and one onto this side. And then I will have, um, you know, stiff covers for them. There's a number of different ways you can do that and maybe I'll um, talk about that in a separate video. But for right now, you can see it's folded pretty well. You know, I'm pretty happy with that one and I fiddled with it a little bit, but I'm just not that concerned about it. You can see there's, you know, like there's a corner that tore off, not square, yeah, who cares? Okay, so that is the process that we are going to go through. Uh, I don't need the knife anymore. Let's see, don't need that. Hey, there may be um, barking and background noise and things like that. I'm in the loft and also when I walk around the camera might shake. I can see it shaking right now. I apologize for that. 
um, the loft doesn't have a very firm um, floor. So that is just gonna happen. Hopefully the camera will take care of most of that shaking for us. So the paper is taped together. And I think that this is going to work best. Let's see if I can get the tape off of it here. Oops, I'm, I'm losing finish. And so, oh well, I'm gonna have a page or two that um, isn't quite right. And maybe if I was more careful, that wouldn't have happened. I haven't had that happen before. So maybe that got hot in the truck or something and really adhered, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Oh, I don't know what else I was gonna tell you. The past ones that I've made, this one right here is uh, six inches by nine inches. And that's a really nice size, oops. I'm trying to decide if I want to go do that way or if I want to split this in third and go 12 inches. Nine, make some that are a little bit bigger. I think I'm, you know, I'm spending a lot of time. This one was pretty quick, but some of them I spent a lot of time in, but I also like a larger format sometimes, but this is really great for traveling. So I guess I'm gonna make them these. So this is fourths, uh, torn into fourths. So what I do is just start by my tools handy, rolling out the paper. And I think I could, well, I could flip it upside down. I think that that would cause more problems in the long run. So I use my straight edge and these blocks to hold it down to any weight that you have in the house will be fine. That's going to want to curl back this way so I can put that on the paper. And you have to just do this, because this is 10 yards long, you could cut it in half, but you'd have to do some measuring to figure that out. So I found it easier to tear it first and then cut them in half once they're torn. So I'm going to just measure this. I decided to make these the same size as the other ones. So... <laughs> It is 36 inches, so I'm going to make some marks at, what did I say, 9 inches, right? 9, 18, 27, and that works out right, 9, 18, 27. So what I'm going to do then, um, I'm going to be tearing that using the edge of this. So I'm going to come down here less than three feet, less than a meter, and I'm going to make the same marks. Nine, 18, 27. And we'll be able to do that again. And you can see I'm not being precious about it. You can if you want to be. Uh, but making books like this, it's kind of inherent that there are just imperfections and that is part of the beauty of them. So, I just put my straight edge, which is not very straight because I've bent it onto two marks. Hold on to it and just tear. It works pretty well to, um, you know, be forceful. If you're timid about this, you're more likely to go off and pull a little bit across the, the uh, ruler. And try and go as far as you can without resetting, and then that's going to want to curl, which works out nicely. So then we're going to move to, oops, to the next one. This table that I made is a little tall for this process. Make sure I'm still on my mark. <laughs> I 
and then that's gonna curl up. And then I'll have to go to the other side. And do the other one. And maybe on your table, that's all you can do. Um, I have room to roll more out. But if that was all you could do, you just stop, reset here. These might be able to go over the edge. And eventually, probably when they're heavier, they will. Reset this this way. And I think I have another set of marks that I, I do. So I can go from the edge where this mark is to there. I wonder if that's even on camera for you. Let's see, it's behind the little rolls. Okay, so I've got my little mark right here and my next mark, oh, same thing. But this now, I'm gonna have to start handling the whole roll. So I definitely want that roll up. <laughs> because it turns into something that's actually kind of cold. Now, if you can go farther than this, if you have a larger table like I do, you can always mark further along. Let's see if I can go here. Nine, 18, and 27 and keep going. Uh, maybe you can do this on the floor. I found that too hard on my knees and my back. So this works out really nicely for me. Um, the dining room table was a little bit hard on my back too because it's just lower. Um, the, whoops, see I went off. Doesn't matter, just pull back and reset. The, um, Kitchen Island would be better if you have one of those that is um, big enough to do something like this. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. <laughs> I can't look at that and back through the camera at the same time. Okay, maybe you can see it. Um, when I was tearing, it came away from the straight edge a little bit, arced out this way. So I just, when I noticed it, I just pulled it back to the edge and I've got a little bit of a lip here. And I kind of enjoy those kind of imperfections. So I suppose what I'll do is just keep filming and fast forward this because you've got this idea now. And then I will start talking to you again for the next part. that my husband hung for me yesterday. It might help. Of course, being brand new, I forgot they were there.
So it's really easy to go off at the very end of your tear. I think I'm still on camera over here, right? No, not quite. At the very end of the tear where you're running out of ruler, it's easy to start pulling away from the ruler. So you wanna make sure that you either have a little mark on your page or you're back to your ruler before you reset the ruler and start measuring again, or you'll be starting not from the right spot. And if your ruler moves a little bit, oh well, just reset it and start again. Honestly, if we want something perfect, we might as well just go ahead and buy it from the store. But the trouble with these things is, I at least have not found a concertina that I like. A lot of people really um, rave about the sea white concertinas. I hate, hate, hate the paper that those are made out of. It, um, it's just basic copy paper that is glued together. It's double-sided, but it's glued together. You know, they take one sheet of paper, fold it in half, so there's glue, and then on the opposite side, they fold it and um, do them opposite, so you've got one folded edge on every crease, but you've also got two glued edges on every crease. So if you work wet, as I tend to do, I like to get all wet and sloppy, the glue lets go, it's not waterproof glue. And the paper peels if you work it too much, and I don't, it just is not, it doesn't suit the way that I work. And this paper I just adore. It takes a lot of abuse, it's inexpensive, it's easy to work with. They also make a beautiful watercolor paper. Um, what's it called? Mon, mon, hmm, hold on a second, I'll show you. Mm, uh, this is Canson. It's called Ma, um, Aquarelle and Montval. There it is, M-O-N-T-V-A-L. You can get it in 36 or 48 inch wide, five yards. It's beautiful paper. It's 140 pound. It is... I'm trying to remember, it's acid-free. I feel like it's a mix of cotton and uh, wood fiber, but I cannot remember for sure, and it doesn't seem to say on here, so maybe it's just wood pulp. But at any rate, it's a really nice kind of medium grade. It's not in arches, but it's also not just uh, inexpensive watercolor or mixed media paper. It's somewhere in between, and it comes in these beautiful rolls, so you can make concertinas out of it. Or you can paint great big giant paper. I use it to paint on mixed media. On uh, it also, I did a couple of pieces that are three foot by four foot with it. It worked fantastic. There's something else that can happen. I picked something up here, who knows where, because the table's clean and the materials are clean and this was on the back side, but I don't care. It's all just part of the part of the process. It will show on the finished book or it won't. But it doesn't matter to me one way or the other.
I think I started enjoying my process of making art a whole lot more when I stopped worrying about that kind of stuff. All right, I'm starting having some serious problems here with my tearing. Let's see, am I on camera? If I drop that down. So I had, I went off, oh, maybe, maybe half an inch, I don't know. Whoops, that was, that was an error. So by dropping that first roll, I don't have anything to get hold of to tear with. So the ruler's in place. You can see that the paper is a ways away from it. So if I just pull it towards the ruler, oops, and it will go right back. I'm showing you all the wrong things to do here, aren't I? So I was doing that and the ruler slipped. So now I'm off again. But I, you know, as I said, I really enjoy these uneven edges. I think they, and I like the torn edges too. I think they just tell a little bit of a story about the uh, making of the book. And they show my hands in the book. A little bit, so I like that. This takes some patience, but I'm going to end up with eight books out of this. And my investment here is, once I, not counting the um, paper creasing tool, which I think is under $20 on Amazon here in the United States, uh, this roll of paper is about 20 bucks. The see why concertinas are, oh gosh, they're um, available only in the UK, so you have shipping, um, intercontinental shipping. And I'm trying to remember last time I looked, I think the price of, and is, is it A4? I'm sorry, I'm not very good at the, at the conversions, but a similar size to nine by six. 
was I think around $15 plus, plus the shipping. So um, when I bought them, I bought a lot of them to make the shipping worthwhile. And I still have a number of them. I bought some of the larger ones too, the A4. So A5 is smaller, right? <laughs> Sorry. I'm doing this wrong. Nine, I'm trying to talk. 18, 27. Um, I bought a number of the larger sized ones too, and those I think are gonna be a lot of fun, but holy cow, it's gonna take some time to work through those, which is fine, because that's what I'm here for. And I do think that working in these sketchbooks like this has made a big difference in my painting. Really, um, it's very easy to take risks in these things. Which is a great skill to develop for canvas and paper as well. The more willing we are to take risks, the more innovative we will become. And off right here a little bit, and it's right at the end, so I'm just going to start from the other side and tear back. And this roll right here now is two concertinas, or one giant one. Um, I decided I was going to do them all, you know, this just one. And um, I got folding, and they're huge, and I compared them to the sea whites, and half of this is very comparable to a sea white. So that was just what I decided to do to make it more manageable. And because it's, I find it fun to, um, now I can move this to the edge. I find it fun to um, you know, explore different things in these books. And I like to do a different exploration. I like the books to um, come together in some way. There we go. To you know, have some kind of unifying theme. There's what I'm looking for. So I want it to be big enough to uh, support my exploration, but not so big that I get bored and don't finish. Because that certainly is something that I'm sure none of you are familiar with. But for me. It is indeed something that happens. All right, two more. So as I'm coming up to the end of this part of this, 
I'm feeling like this video has probably gone on long enough even if I fast forward through some of this stuff. So I think what I'll do is stop here. And once I finish this and finish talking to you, and then I will um, give you time if you want to make one of these to get your materials together. And I will continue recording. And I'm also coming up with the idea. Um, I don't think I have told you all yet, but I am working on a big class uh, called Creating a Path Through Change. It's about using art to support ourselves as we deal with all of the craziness in our lives and in the world. And um, I'm going to be releasing that on Teachable. You can get a link to information about it on my website under uh, my online classes. Look for um, creating a path through change. And I hope to launch it around the first of the year, hopefully right at the first of the year. So the first of 2022. And um, at any rate, I'm going to, I think I will make this into a mini class as well, creating a whole concertina and offer it there in one piece. But I will show you how to finish this here too. And that will be a, uh, well, I shouldn't make that promise. So that will uh, be available. When it's available, you'll see a tab to it on my website. Um, if you're interested in getting email updates, go to my website and sign up for my email newsletter. Um, you can also go to my Teachable school. Try and finish that. Over there, almost. There. You can go to my Teachable school and sign up for the school, and then you will get notifications when new classes are added, or opened, I should say. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's, I think, what I will do. All right, so I hope that you found this helpful. Feel free to, um, to subscribe to my channel to get notifications when I post new videos. Uh, sign up for my email list, like the video, um, sign up for my school on Teachable, and I'll see you somewhere soon, I hope. Thanks so much for watching.